Sisters manifesting their dreams, get your cream by any means and being with self-esteem. Beauty supreme and booty walk so mean. The way you fit in them jeans, you eat your cornbread and greens. Dance or a doctor, red wine or vodka. Redesign your spot and redefine your mantra. Retwist your locks and realign your chakras. Doing your squats and getting closer to God, huh? Brunching with your squad or taking a girl's trip. Adjust your crown, you guys give to the world, sis. Celeste your body, drink your water. Meditate, sun kiss goddess, heavenly order. Levitate. Tribe of Ashanti, black girl magic, melanin popping, whether you ratchet or lavish, whether you bougie or savage, you a gift and a treasure. You got to love a black girl getting a shift together. Black girls are getting a shift together. These black girls getting a shift together, man. These black girls are getting a shift together. These black girls getting a shift together, dog. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Black Girls Getting Their Shift Together. This is a podcast that specializes in mental health and wellness for our community with the specialty of women of color. Wow, people are already coming in. Wow, this is some good stuff. My name is Ursula and I'm your host and I pledge to give you some informative topics about mental health and wellness. You you name it. There's a it's an umbrella and we're going to just trickle down, play around with it. So, we have a great topic today and our beautiful guest is therapist Sarita Ibrahim. She's in the waiting room right now, but I just want to let you all know that <clears throat> this sister knows what she's talking about. I've had plenty of talks with her off and online. So once again, she's she's a, a family member of this community. So we're gonna get right. Oh, and Sarita, you are already getting hearts already. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Katrina, yes. All right, Katrina, you're front and center. So let me bring the Sarita. Beautiful Sarita on right now. Hi. <laughs> hey, <I'll be. laughs> hey, Sarita. Hello, and thank you for having me on this amazing show once again. Thank you for saying yes, because I know, obviously, everyone knows, because people are already piling in. You're going to bring the fire. <laughs> so before we. Oh, she says she loves your hair. Katrina says she loves your hair. And Rahima says good evening from London. Hi, Rahima. She's one of my one of my faves. She always shows up on my lives. Thank you, honey. I love you. And thank you for the compliment for my hair. You know, I will try to outshine this hair in this live. You know, it's going to be hard, but I think I can do it. <laughs> I'm loving this. We already off to a good start. So everyone. Wherever you're coming in from, just like uh, Rahima, Katrina, you come in and say hello. It's happy Friday. <laughs> Freedom Friday. Say hello. I want you to type in where you are coming from. Like, so, okay, Robin, I agree. She says, Sarita is the truth. Thank you. Period. I love you, Robin. I do. Thank you. <laughs> it's all true. And yeah, I would agree. So we have people <laughs> from Atlanta, Brookhaven, London. Okay. Oh, Canada. I don't know who that is, but he hello, Angela. Hello, <laughs> Derek, Canada. Derek said hello, ladies. And Krishan's checking in from Detroit. Hi. That's my boo. I remember that name. Yes. <laughs> I'll let you talk about that. I so, okay. You. So, as we know, February is the month of love. And we all want to get, look at your face already. We all want to look for love in different ways from different people. And Valentine's Day is the 14th. So, let's keep it real. We know there are some ladies out there that 
by default because they choose to celebrate Valentine's Day on the 13th and the 15th. This topic is for you. <laughs> and you know what? Straight up, people who are celebrating it on the 14th, you know, we were prepping everybody for this month of love. So today's topic is toxic D. If you've had toxic D, and we're going to go into what it, the surface of it is, and then Sarita's going to dig deep into what <laughs> Krishan said. Y'all starting already. Yes, Krishan. Yes. Time is we up. Going and in. We going in. We going in. We going way <laughs> in. So, you know, we've all had it, but if any of this sounds familiar, even a little bit or a lot, I want you to just type an eggplant in the comments. <laughs> you just go put everybody out there like that? I can type my eggplant in there. I just I mean, I can too. I, I think we all can, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, Robin says we ready, so we're ready too. Sarita, on the surface level, what is toxic D? <sighs> and why is it so necessary in our life? Why well, is it necessary? Or <laughs> seeming necessary? Because we feel okay. like so, why is it necessary. Yeah. So we're laughing a lot because this is a topic that is purposeful and crazy as hell at the same time. And we get some laughs. We can also get some truth. So toxic D is that dick that got you digmatized. The sex that will have you either out of your mind or thinking you're in fake love. In what love? Fake love. Okay. <laughs> so it's really about sex that is a substitute for real intimacy. That's mm. the therapist um, version of toxic D. Um, but the truth is, it gives you a big O. And here on this show, we're going for the big aha. <laughs> ah. Okay. Um, may I put an asterisk in this before we really get started? Everyone and Sarita, there are workers literally cutting trees down. So I apologize if you hear any background noise. It's I still don't. not gonna okay. Well, we're still gonna get right into it. And Robin said the big O and infatuation and fake love. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. So you know, I've had both. <laughs> I think we all have. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, that's what it is. So I'm going to ask you a few questions and I'd love for you to give me your definition on what all this toxicity is. So when you say it's a substitute for intimacy or love, what kind of intimacy are you thinking of when you say toxic D? So toxic D is obviously going to come with a toxic person. And that's what makes it toxic. It ain't toxic because it's real good. It's toxic. It's toxic because what else comes with it? And I talk about fake love and pseudo intimacy because intimacy is into me see with being intimate with another person. It can be confused with sex, but it is absolutely not. <laughs> intimacy is it requires vulnerability. It requires honesty and connection and the willingness to show someone your complete self. Take the mask off, the wigs, the eyelashes, the makeup, and to let someone see the real you, not just the outer aspects of you, but the, the all of the things that make you a complex, wonderful human being. Mm. That's intimacy. So what I hear you say is being authentic with yourself. It is, it is authenticity and it, it creates a connection. It creates the foundation of a relationship. And truly it's, it's the attachment that we experience in friendships and close relationships. So 
What do I mean about what? About the friendship part. <laughs> How can we actually be friends if you don't know me? Friends, yeah. not, not friends with benefits, not fake friends, sometimes friends, work friends. If you are my true friend, then we must be real with one another. We must be able to be honest with one another. And which is why I think a lot of friends with benefits, it's just about the benefits, which is the sex or whatever thing that you've agreed to mutually exchange that is not related to vulnerability. Mm. And let's keep it real. Many of us, we say we want a relationship. We say we want connection, but we will fight, honey. We will fight. We will ignore we will do everything we can to put up the walls to keep people from really seeing us because that means if I'm vulnerable with you, then I'm increasing the possibility of me being hurt. And yeah. many people, men and women included, toxic D especially, what's the fake connection without actually being seen and without the threat of being hurt? Mm. So I can get my orgasm and we can pretend a little bit, but that's all you're going to get. That's all you're going to get, at yeah. least from that person in that moment. Right. Ooh. Why is it so hard to show the true you? Uh, we could do a whole show on that. So <laughs> let me say that. Uh, uh, I'm just going to put the tip in when I say this because I don't want to go too deep right now. Um. <laughs> You know, I'm just just put the tip in. I, I just that's it. Um, <laughs> the truth is, human beings, we are so amazing and courageous and fantastic, and we're all these wonderful things. But we can be so full of shit. Yeah, yeah. We can move mountains for other people and make amazing things happen. But when it comes to the heart. Some would rather, and it could be consciously or unconsciously, some would rather block, deny, avoid the connection and deny themselves a wonderful experience, which may not even work out the way they want it to. Right. But it's fear. And it definitely almost always is linked to childhood. Mm, would that be considered also a childhood trauma? It absolutely could be a... So here we get into the definition of trauma. Trauma could be, as I've mentioned before on this show, a capital T trauma it could be a big trauma, abuse, um, neglect, but it also can be emotional neglect. So, mm. and, and let me talk about the toxic D because I've been talking about the women who like the toxic D, but the toxic D is usually a male who has either succumbed to toxic masculinity, meaning they're not in touch with their emotions. I was going to ask you that. What is your definition of toxic masculinity? Can you go a little deeper in that? Oh, so you want the whole thing? You don't want me to just put the tip in? Okay. All right, let me go. I, I like to go deep. That's 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 where I live because it feels real good, you know, when you go deep. So <laughs> toxic masculinity is um, a byproduct of the patriarchy, or as I like to call it, the fucking patriarchy. So yeah. the idea that a man has to be, in order to be masculine, in order to be a man, because if you're feminine or you display feminine qualities, then you're weak and you're not deserving of respect as a man, according mm. to the culture, not reality. Mm. And so we have to make a distinction because I'm not saying I agree with that because what it actually does is it keeps men from embracing all of their humanity because humans come with emotions. That's what makes us human. And so for yeah. a man to be shaped by the culture, by their family, by the expectations placed on them, that it's not okay to be emotional, it's not okay to cry, it's not okay to express mm -hmm. vulnerability, you have to be strong. If you're a misogynist, it's all the way good. The more women that you have, the more sex that you have, it makes you a player and you more respected and you're going to get that from your boys. Toxic masculinity. Yes. The idea that men have to fit in a very narrow role. So that's a lot to compete with. 
it's like, okay, well, I can't even express myself and say, I would like to be vulnerable and I would like to express my feelings. I would like not like to have sex with bunches and bunches of women, even though I'd be handsome and articulate and intelligent. Mm. How would they be judged by the other alpha males in their sphere, in their family? They would probably call bitches. Absolutely. You know what? Let me tell you this. I used to live in another state. <clears throat> I used to live in Alabama for a little bit. And this, this uh, co-worker of mine, we were just talking about our past, like, you know, where we grew up and who, how many siblings. This sister said she had over 20 siblings because when her father was a teenager, I know, I know, you, I can see on your face already, for real, her father and his friends had a competition to see how many women they can get pregnant. I'll take a deep breath on that one. You know? So and, not take care of, not get pregnant and take care of and build families no. and have a compound and take care of everybody. Okay. I just no. want to check it. Yeah, not having a homestead, not creating gener generational wealth, not creating uh, generations of, not having your tribe growing healthy. No, just how many they can get pregnant. And so she said that she knows she has over 20, but she's really not sure of the exact number. How does that look? That, that, that just breaks my heart. So already she just came out already. This is the, the starting line. It's already bad. So like I'm speechless and surprised and not surprised. It makes me think what sense of self or sense of worth or sense of self-respect, what must one be lacking if your total and complete focus is to attempt to bring children into the world that you are intentionally not intentionally <laughs> taking care of. That mm -hmm. says a lot to me about emptiness in yeah. my opinion. And so that makes me think about a sexual narcissist as well. Speaking <laughs> of that. Yes, okay. I mean, you, we went from toxic masculinity, and that's an important aspect to to uh, sexual narcissists. And so, a go ahead. Excuse me, if you don't mind. I definitely want to know both of those definitions, but I would love to read a couple of the comments. Okay. Uh, so oh, let me go. Wow, they are coming in. First of all, Katrina. This goes back to slipping the tip in. Robin says, slip and dip it in. Katrina said, no tip. <laughs> Katrina also said, the whole shebang. Girl, oh, yes, ma'am. I know that's right. The <laughs> whole shebang is toxic. Uh, Robin said that I'm sorry that I had to endure Alabama. <laughs> Krishan, to the story about my coworker in Alabama, she said, wow. And yes. She said, breathe, y'all. Yeah, that, that took a lot, even explaining that story. And Robin also said they love the fuck out of their fucked up on a whole nother mother left. Yes. And Robin said, only thinking of the competition and getting the screw. Yes. <sighs> Boy. So that means the whole motivation is competition in the worst kind of way. Hmm. So you had uh, touched on the uh, having sex with a narcissist. What, what does that mean? <laughs> so there is what has been identified in some research, um, the type of narcissist that's called a sexual narcissist which is a little bit different than what we know of as a narcissist, but I'm gonna talk about them too. Okay. So for a sexual narcissist, uh, and I have some notes here because, you know, I always like to come prepared. You come with it. 
Yes, ma'am. always got to, got to. Mm. You know, my stroke got to be good, honey. <laughs> so the sexual narcissist. Put your back in it. Put your back in it before you say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, that's right. And give me that look like you know it's good. Give and me that look. Say it, bite your bottom <laughs> lip. <laughs> oh, that's why I love you. <laughs> Ooh, stay focused. A sexual narcissist has an overly positive, egotistical admiration of their own sexual prowess and can become become consumed by their obsession with sexual performance and the need for the sexual admiration of others. And this is um, reported by a therapist, Brandon Stanton. So it's like they idealize their own self image. So they become, it, it, it becomes a supply source for them. So if I can, you know, <clears throat> make you feel real good and control you through how I make your body feel, then that makes me feel all the more wonderful about myself. It gives them a sense of esteem. Uh. And these kind of sexual narcissists will also ignore you after sex. So they've gotten the supply that they wanted and then they may breadcrumb you or just completely just ignore you because the I'm done with you. You're like a masturbation tool. Thank yeah. you. And they'll move on. They may behave violently during sex. So they may have these aggressive sexual tendencies. So their, their aggression might not show up in the everyday world like we see with the, the traditional narcissist, but it can and often does show up, show up during sex. And they may well, exhibit- Excuse me. Excuse me one second. And mm -hmm. I'm really not being funny. This is a true question. So is that this- you already laughing, but I really want to know. So is this like when you're having sex and they gently choke you out or like how that, I, I, that, Okay, so they didn't give an exact scale of all the things that this narcissist can do, but no. it, it's, it, it, it specifically is around boundaries. So if you said you don't like to be choked out or don't choke me out, they may violate your boundaries and attempt to exert some control okay. over you. Got so it. I think that aggression is specific towards the individual and what they have or have not consented to during the act or in terms of any sexual contact. Wow. Does That's that make cute. sense? Because we yeah. know narcissists like to push boundaries, right? They like to yeah. obliterate your boundaries. And it's no different during sex. And these sexual narcissists are also serial cheaters. Mm -hmm. So, because that's where they're getting their supply. So they lie and have sex and cheat. And then of course they will take no responsibility and Absolutely blame you not. or accuse you. So that aspect is normal in terms of um, narcissistic personality. But yes, it can be, and, and, and they can be very, very good at the act. And of course, they would be cl be classified toxic D. Mm. You just put the whole nine in. <laughs> Girl, I bring 10, okay? Damn. Wow, that was deep. For Excuse the pun, but for real, that was deep. Yes. Oh, and one other thing I almost forgot is they yeah. also lack empathy for their partners. So sex is not about pleasing you. It's not about what you want, what makes you feel good. No, it's about what makes me feel good. And if what I do happens to make you feel good, then okay. But please understand, it's all about me. Mm. Woo, girl. It's going down. Literally, uh, let me read a couple of, com well, many comments. Someone said, you be stroking, Sarita. <laughs> I be stroking. <laughs> no, that's right. She Ooh. really do. And that it's so sad. Uh, Krishan said, yikes. Um, Rahima, yes, Rahima, I agree. They are, those narcissistic, toxic deeds, they are disgusting. I'm glad I've been saved from those. Uh, if I have ever encountered that type, um, Robin said, this needs to, yes, Robin, this needs to be taught to teens so that they can be aware. Yeah, oh, 
that is a word right there. What, can, can I add to that? Please do. I think that it does need to be taught, taught to teens. I also think that we, we got to do a lot of teaching. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Because for those of us who have empathy, who feel like we should give people a chance or we've experienced trauma and you know we want to feel validated and needed because of our trauma, we're not trying to hurt nobody but we end up hurting ourselves. And yeah. therefore, because of our issues, we become prey to those people who are predators. Yeah. So this is a game that we are talking about that people are playing that is void of humanity. Mm. And I always say, we gotta bring human back, honey. And I think that means that we have to really look at how we parent, how we talk to children, how we build our children up. How do we establish self-esteem and self-worth in our children? Because that's yeah. when all of this stuff is actually created. The foundation of our being and our authenticity or the lack thereof begins in our childhood. Absolutely. So yes, I think we should talk to teens, but we really need to be talking to parents. That's who we need to be talking to. Yeah. I just had to take the condom off on that one, but I'm going to put it back on now. You go ahead. You talk. Take What's your, your thoughts? <laughs> What's your thoughts? <laughs> well, what my initial thought was until you made some more sense, once again, taking it that deep layer, one of my therapist friends, she told me that it is important to communicate with children, teens, because it's easier to train a child than heal an adult. It is, but the, go ahead. No, go I'm ahead. listening. I'm so sorry, I got so excited. Go, go ahead. It is easier to train a child, but the problem is, if I train you in a class and then you go home to a toxic environment with toxic parents who are full of shame, who don't understand that your existence is not for their control, what I teach you in a three hour class or after school program, it ain't gonna matter. It might plant some seeds that they can water on their own when they become an adult. But I always say that if attachment is threatened, human beings will self-sacrifice. So that child will, for their survival, they will be molded by the parent. So I do think it's easier to train a child because children come out the womb blank slates. We see little black boys, like babies, they're so cute. We never think, oh, he's gonna grow up and have a toxic D and and <laughs> have a path of destruction behind him. They don't it's think that cute. when they see this cute face. Yeah, wow. So we, we, I think we have a responsibility that uh, to children and also to support parents mm. because we can do all the things to try attempt to take care of children at school and creating programs. But if their parents are toxic or dysfunctional or addicted, it will matter not. Mm. So that was a lot. In a good way, but it was a lot. And while you're talking, all I hear is trauma, 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 big trauma, big T, little T trauma. It's it's sad. Well, you know, we're talking about wounds and hurt people, and hurt people have a different experience in the world. They have. Um, defenses and walls and protective mechanisms that in some cases um, create the circumstances for them to destroy other people. Wow. That's the ultimate weapon. And, and, oh. and for many of them, they don't see it or understand it. And it's because they developed in a certain way. And so bringing it back to toxic D, <laughs> mm -hmm. they will use what they can in order to get what they want. Wow. Let's touch on another subject. Well, what's your opinion about being promiscuous after trauma? And since mostly black women 
are in this forum, um, black women and sexual abuse. What's your thoughts so, on that? We know that black women, I think I had all these numbers in my head and, and forgive me, so I'm just gonna give you the average because mm -hmm. I know black women are four times more than likely to be sexually abused or raped more than any of our counterparts. Mm -hmm. The black women are also less likely to report sexual abuse. We know the incidents. Um, I think it's one in five girls, one in four or five girls that have been sexually as, a, abused. But they, we really don't know the stats because you know silence is a tool that is often used by predators and families in order to um, keep their predatorial behavior, you know, intact. So they can, that, you know, is that the same I'm, as toxic shame by being silent? So the <laughs> so the toxic shame is as a re, the toxic shame is what results from the trauma. So a predator or a family unit or someone can shame the victim mm. into whether shame them or blame them, shame them for the experience, shame them because it happened, shame them because they make them stay silent about it. That mm -hmm. can um, lay the foundation for toxic shame to develop. And toxic shame is a common aspect of uh, PTSD or complex PTSD. Mm -hmm. So after trauma, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And just for any anyone listening, toxic shame is the belief that instead of I am, I've experienced the thing or this thing is shameful, it's I am shameful. So the shame becomes mm -hmm. a part of how they see themselves. Yeah. It's like an internal sense of, feeling or being broken. Mm, wow. Whew. So back to the promiscuous mm -hmm. woman mm -hmm. trauma. So, so it is common, more common than people might realize that after trauma, um, people can be hypersexual or mm -hmm. promiscuous. And the reason for that is there's several reasons that researchers suggest why that happens. And one is control. So it's a sense of I'm in control of my body. I do what I want. I have sex when I want. Right. And another aspect is a sense of worth and validation. Because if you were sexually abused, and let's say if that's the only time you received any kind of attention or validation was through sexual acts, then you will believe that is what you must do in order to be validated or considered worthy. And right. it becomes a part of how you see yourself and how basically your identity. And also, you know, with trauma, that means someone has crossed your boundaries. Mm. Someone has, or you've never learned boundaries or no, never learned that you had boundaries. So your boundaries, and I know from personal experience that you don't know how to set boundaries. You right. might not know how to say no. You might not even want to say no. You might feel like you have to say yes. And uh, so the, the propensity to become hypersexual is high based on these things. And the last one that I wanted to add is a, a chemical dependency or addiction. And this is why toxic D is toxic D. Because when you have sex, all these hormones are released, all these hormones that feel good. It could be oxytocin, which is the bonding hormone or dopamine or norepinephrine. So especially if you've experienced trauma, research shows that you may have lower levels of the like happiness hormone serotonin. And so if when you have sex or when you have these intimate encounters, not only are you wanted, at least for that time or validated, but you also experience a flush of emotions. That's what happens when you have an orgasm. It's a buildup of dopamine. You know what I'm saying? It's like, cause you can feel it building up. You're like, oh, it's coming, it's coming. Because your brain, <laughs> your brain is doing what it needs to do right. to make you feel real, real good. And that's what happens when you do drugs. <laughs> drugs mimic our natural hormones. And so sex, having sex, the release of sex, the toxic D releases all of those hormones. So you can actually have an addiction to those feelings. Wow. <laughs> and it can feel like love when it's just sex and your body doing what it does during sex. And you might attribute it to the toxic D. Mm. 
and keep going back for another hit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Addicted. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> well, you just got me pregnant right there. <laughs> I thought I was gonna pull out, girl. I did. Yeah, you pull out, but it was so good. It was so good. I was just, I was going in. You know what I'm saying? I'm in there having sex. I'm in there making love. So come give me a hug. Why do we all know that song? And we wonder why our sexual activities and our partnerships are crazy. You know what I'm saying? But it was, it had a good beat though. <laughs> Listeners. <laughs> if you heard anything that Sarita said that can you agree with or you heard of or you anything, just put a, a heart emoji if you're not comfortable with the eggplant. But <laughs> give us some hearts because you know deep down we Ur Ursula picked this topic and I just kind of like jumped on top and I was like, I'm gonna go for the ride with it, you know. But the <laughs> the truth is in all my laughter and my amazing jokes and sometimes a little inappropriate I definitely want you to get some learning get some yes. understanding and really most importantly is for you to recognize your innocence because if you've ever been caught up in a toxic D or a toxic relationship it's important to understand why from within not what was I thinking I was so dumb I was caught up no baby guilty a, I, I will say that guilty like, <laughs> who, who <laughs> among us if who among us has not been guilty, please let thee cast thy first stone. <laughs> who and, among us? Oh my God, guilty as hell. And yeah, and it all goes back to giving yourself grace. Yes. And I, Amen, uh, honey. And Amen. I learned from you that the healing, for real, you remember that conversation we had? I'm like, I'm out of good. And you put the tip in again, and I just fell out. And <laughs> I realized I learned from you that the healing never stops. So it I it never stops. Yeah, and I didn't realize that I had a an old habit that I've gotten better with, but still working on not giving myself grace, beating myself up about Ursula, how could you not? Ursula, you know better. <laughs> so can I just can I say one thing about that please do because when it comes to those of us who've experienced trauma or we've had shitty parents yeah. or we were neglected in some way a common symptom of that trauma is that toxic inner voice that's how we become toxic so it is not something to be ashamed of or to criticize ourselves for because that critical nature is the way that we try to self-protect, the way that we try yeah. to be perfect, the way that we try to figure out and maneuver through life. But what happens is that voice doesn't understand or recognize that you grown now. Life is different. You are no longer powerless. And the healing is about you, the grown you, the authentic you, the divine in you, to yeah. be able to recognize that that voice is not you. That voice is the recorder of the past. Mm. That voice is the voice of the people who were toxic in your life. That is not your voice. Your voice is the voice of love. Your voice is the voice of reason. Your voice is the voice of wisdom. Your voice is calm and reassuring. That's your real voice. And even just to understand the difference between the two can set you free. Yes. Because you understand that that voice does not tell the truth. It recounts the past. And so you can own your innocence and release the self-judgment that may come up mm -hmm. because you yeah. said negative things to you because other people have said negative things to you. Right. Wow. Whew. I definitely need to see some hearts in the comments if, if that resonated with you. I know it resonated with me. I'm learning as we're talking right now. That that was some deep stuff for real. Wow. Whew. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm gonna ease up on you. I ain't gonna blow you back out right now. I just, you know, <laughs> let's let's get back to the foreplay. Let's do the foreplay. So uh <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, um, Monique said, this is grown folks conversation with a heart. Yeah, Mo. It is. It really is. It is. Oh, hey, Celeste. Hey, so, Celeste. That's Celeste, the therapist. Oh, hi, Celeste, the therapist. <laughs> oh, she's amazing, like, in every aspect. Okay, I have another question. I definitely would love your insight about it. What about the trauma bonds related to the toxic D? So we have touched on this in various ways because with the trauma bond, and I did mention the narcissist. And remember with the narcissist, a narcissist does not inherently know how to be intimate, to be vulnerable, to connect at that deep level because they are wearing mask on mask on mask. And we talked about the toxic shame. So at the core of their person is toxic shame, which is why they need supply. In order for me to feel better about myself, I need someone to validate me. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. with, a, with um, trauma bonds, a narcissist can utilize sex and they will utilize anything, including your triggers, including your childhood wounds. They will learn that very fast because they are adept at manipulation and they will use that to hook you. You won't, you know, when you see a hook, you, you don't see the bait. But they'll use those things to hook you and to attempt to seem like, act like, to give you the illusion of that they're giving you all the things that you've always needed, all the things that you've wanted, all the things that you've been missing. They will position themselves to yes. become that for you for a temporary time until you become addicted. Just so, like Robin said, master manipulators. Exactly. exactly. And then we adhere it like, ah. Oh. We are just twin flames. Yeah. Soulmate. I yes. love him. He yes. loves true inner me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he don't me. even. Yeah, he <laughs> he knows the things about you that he can use to to manipulate you. He can use against you as a weapon. Absolutely. And so he can um he will do that through love bombing through um, recognizing what you what your boundaries are and attempting to push them or obliterate them. And he will give you intermittent displays of defection, affection after all that love bombing is done. So you can keep chasing and wanting and you know trying to prove yourself and do better and get back to the way things was when the way things was was a fantasy anyway. Yay. And so the trauma bond um, occurs when you are bonded as a supply source for the narcissist and he hmm. can use sex as a weapon to achieve that since we're talking about toxic D and he may and the sex can be great or not <laughs> in terms of reports from women who've been in these kinds of relationships but it's used as another tool to manipulate you the narcissist doesn't really care how you feel he cares how you feel about him Wow. So if you can, if he can, or she, not just him, but if they can use that as a way to get your admiration or to control you or to dominate you or to gain access to your resources, tools, contacts, money, whatever it is they might want, then uh, they will assure that you are bonded to them. You are addicted to them, to whatever supply you think you're getting because there's something missing in you. There's something that you haven't recognized in you that makes you pray. And so here we have, with a trauma bond, one individual who is the prey and believing or thinking or desiring to have their needs met, to be validated and seen as worthy. And the other one is demanding all of that. So basically, <laughs> two people really wearing a mask, whether they realize it or not not being their authentic self, not yeah. having real vulnerability and attempting to manipulate one another in one way or the other to get their needs met. That's mm -hmm. the truth of it. It may not look like that when you're in a relationship, <laughs> but that is the truth, which is why, you know, we're on here talking about healing. Right. You know, it's funny on a Derek show, he had a similar topic. Now that you're talking about the mask and when he came on mine as well, and it's about wearing that mask. And I remember when he was on, and I'm going to repeat it again. You have so many masks on. Like you said, there's two people, mask on top, mask, mask. It's all the layers. And before you know it, you literally are wrapped up like a mummy. 
you can't get in, you can't get out, you know, and on both people. And then you having children with this person. You marry them, you have homes, cars, grandkids. <sighs> when you have on the mask, you can, an individual can become so identified with the mask that they think that they are the mask. They don't recognize unless you, it hurts and the pain gets too deep, you know, and, they're, and they begin to kind of do the inner work to understand what's going on. But usually, and I don't want to say usually because I don't want to say that most people aren't self-aware. I would like to think otherwise, at least that we're, we have an interest in going in that direction. I have to think that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but for those who um, lack the skill uh, of looking within themselves, they don't recognize, they don't understand the self-protection protects them from um, actually being hurt and being vulnerable, but it also protects us from real authentic connection, from real honest lives, from being authentic, right. from um, being able to actually raise healthy children. Because what we will do is teach our children how to, how to wear a mask, how to create a mask, how to be everything other than who they really are. Let me That's tell why you we have something. generational trauma. Let me tell you something. It was so good. I've learned how to get the animal, get the fabric, weave it together, create a mask. I could create the loop. Like I learned, I had some good teachers on how to not wear it, but know how to make it from scratch. <laughs> I'm not proud of that. I'm just being... That was definitely a transparent moment right there. I yeah, I learned from the best. Not I think most I think most of us have. I certainly learned that um, it was very important to put forth an image mm -hmm. of togetherness, of strength, of um, um, being exceptional being smart. So my mask, and I still, I mean, it. there are certainly parts of my personality that will love to get cute and love to, you know, present this image because I learned that. I was shaped to be that. Yeah. I was shaped to, I remember I was hit by a car when I was 16 mm -hmm. and weeks after, probably like two months later, I went out with my mom and I got dressed and I did my hair. I put on another weave ponytail. I don't even know how I did that because my shoulder was broke and I couldn't move it. But I somehow, I managed to get this weave ponytail out. And we were out, you know, walking in the streets very slowly because my mom was like, okay, just take it easy. And this yeah. woman said, you know, you look great. And my mom said, oh, she was in my car two months ago. And she was like, really? <laughs> like, what? But I knew no other way <laughs> right. but to put forth that image out into the world. And I think most of us do that. Like we did on your show, the previous um, pod, the superwoman syndrome. Exactly. And if you all want to know about that, you can go back, go on my, uh, on my podcast and just search any platform, black girls getting their shit together. And it was about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And there was an episode where Sarita went in on the superwoman complex, deep into it. I sure it. did, I sure did. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I learned that I had superwoman, a woman complex. I had no idea until that show. So that, yeah. And if you have a question or you don't think you are, you maybe you don't, but go back and listen to that episode and you will find out some things you never knew about yourself. Like I did. Absolutely. Uh, and it's I, on my page as well. And that's why I work with super women. So please stay uh, for the end of the show so we can talk about how you too can learn how to burn your cape. <laughs> exactly. So there's a lot of uh, chatter on here. Some good questions and people are chiming in. Can we address, 
hey, Viola, can hey. we do better ways to overcome the shame of getting hooked on a narcissist? And then there were a few other people that were um, chiming in, like, great question. So that's a heavy question. And you, for anyone, uh, you need to be in my program if that is something that you're challenged with because with toxic shame, and this is why I have, why I teach this in my program because it's not necessarily something that, oh, I can just do a ritual. I can just, you know, do some affirmations and I'm good. No. Because the reality is it's, becomes weaved into who you think you are, becomes weaved into your personality. Mm -hmm. So your the mask that we wear for many of us is made of toxic shame. That's the fabric. So, That's exactly, the fabric. exactly. So with, with toxic shame, it will have us feeling unworthy or disconnected or seeking validation. But the mind is so amazing and so creative that people can have toxic shame or be, do, do, have this kind of behavior and not even be aware of it. So if I'm a superwoman, for example, if I'm a perfectionist, if I'm striving and I'm working, I may not recognize what the motivation is behind it. What is forcing me to, to, to have this drive to succeed? Yes. And I'm not saying this for everybody. But for many, the, the real thing is toxic shame. So I can prove my worth with a title, with a job, with money, with a car, with the house, whatever external thing yes. that society yeah. says, um, says that you're worthy and you're valuable. And so it does take it does take work to unravel all that. It takes a willing to tell the truth about your past, about your history, about how you've coped. Because first we got to recognize, oh, shit, all the things that I've been doing to make myself feel good is because at my core, I've been feeling bad. Mm -hmm. That takes a, a heavy sense of awareness and being willing to see yourself without judgment. And let's be clear. A, a narcissist will sense and pick up on all of that. Yes. And that is why they are such great manipulators. They're not, they're not able to see their own toxic shame, their own issues, but they can see yours and they will exploit it. Oh my God. Yeah, yes. Uh, someone said a lot of people avoid healing or seeking professional help based on experience of shame. Girl, yes, ma'am. That's true. I, I, we live in a shaming Ooh. culture and it's so <laughs> that's an aspect of our traumatized culture. We Excuse shame. Uh, uh, uh. Black people. Go ahead. Now finish it. That's my opinion. Our culture is horrible about mental uh, illness and mental health. What do you think? No, I know that. I know that. So, okay. I, I'm not disagreeing with you at all. I agree that we are, uh, there's a stigma is the word everyone uses and, and, and knows and is appropriate. Um, Very. I took a pause because black people in general, we have a distrust for systems. For <laughs> There's a reason why, you know what I'm saying? We've experienced our own trauma. And we don't trust. We don't trust systems. We don't trust these professionals because we done been through lots of things. <laughs> yeah. You know, with racism and oppression. And so we Slavery have to... It goes further back. Slavery. It does. And, and I bring that up because we have to be willing to look at why in our culture, especially our culture, where we've experienced so much that was not our fault. Why would we shame healthiness in the mind? If, if someone body shame, if there was a cultural thing about body shaming health or body shaming going to the gym, people would be like, what are you talking about? You're shaming health now? And it's the same thing. Like we really have to look at the things that we've just accepted and swallowed whole without digesting. The yeah. fact that our mental health 
And we know that mental health is the basis of everything. You know about adverse childhood experiences. We know the impact of poverty or stress. All of those things is toxic stress. So, ooh, toxic we stress. Got to, that's and that, well, that's what trauma is. Trauma is toxic stress. Yeah. And a whole lot of things fit into that umbrella, which is why we have to be willing to think for ourselves and really have an understanding about the things that we shame. We shame poor people in poverty. Mm -hmm. Insane. Yes. Insane. And so we wonder why we have toxic relationships and toxic D because we have, we have so many ways that we minimize people that we mm. take away their humanity. Mm. And yeah. how can we have relationships? How can we have healthy families if people are forced into toxic shame? Exactly. It's, it's the emotion, you, you, what's that term, the walking dead? The emotionally walking dead. Whoa, girl, I could say a whole bunch about that. And it is. It is. It is. And then you put your toxic shame and guilt on a newborn baby that's just innocent, just sprinkling all that toxicity on them. And there you go. Yes, we got it. We got to do better. But, you know, that that's why I am. I have done a deep dive myself and I, and continuing to take a deep dive because the work does not stop. And, you know, we have different programs and workshops and you have one also. Would you, can you tell the people about it? <laughs> yes, I do. I have um, a program called Love University and in Love University, uh, <laughs> I give you all of the tools. We do what's called a lot of psychoeducation to understand how trauma, excuse me, has impacted you. Mm -hmm. What are the ways uh, th that, that you relate? What's your trauma personality? So really what trauma do it does for a lot of us, it is it impairs our ability to have healthy relationships and relate in healthy ways. It suffocates our voice. So we lose the ability for self-expression. We dismiss or cut ourselves off from our own needs, our own voice, our own wants, and from our, our authenticity. So Love University is about recovering you, your true self, your real self, your divine self, your ability, as I mentioned before, to connect with your own wisdom, mm -hmm. all of the ways that you've blocked and you've given yourself reasons and justifications to not love you. Because Anything that you can come up with to label yourself unlovable is a lie. Absolutely. The problem is that with trauma, especially childhood trauma, the idea that or the belief, the, the deep core belief that you are unlovable or unworthy can be so far back that you have no memory of it. You have no memory of the experiences. And yeah. it's not necessary for you to have those memories. And plus, I take you through a therapy where you can connect with all that. So I've had, I've had a, one of my members call it a seance. She's like, what's that seance thing you do? I'm like, that's therapy. But yes. <laughs> and she's like, I've been to therapy, but I never did that. So with this type of therapy, I help members, and we'll be getting to this part soon in the university where I teach this, where you can connect with your inner self the inner parts of you to mm -hmm. understand what's going on, what's happening, what do I need, what do I want? Um, what is my story? Because we repress our stories and then the more that we ignore who we are and what we've experienced, the more dysfunctional we become. Right. So I'm all about having super women be transformed into super human beings. Yes. Not superhuman, but a super human being, an amazing human being. So yeah. yes, join Love You. The link is on my website and it should be in the show notes. Self-love special ad for sisters. So come on, you can get a seven day free trial. I want to hear no excuses if life ain't working. If you've been addicted to some toxic D and you know you done lost your mind and you want to get more of you and more of real love, which is you, then you need to come on instant class on Tuesday. <laughs> How did I do? Did I do good? 
<laughs> yes, you did so well. As usual, I, I feel like, matter of fact, when we get up, I'm about to go get a plan B pill. <laughs> because you did, you put your back in that. A girl had to bust a wide open. We have to bust the truth wide open. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, of course. You busted the truth wide open. Like that's what it is. That's what it is. And with with innocence too. There's no shame in the truth. We gotta shine a light. And that's what it means. This, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Yes. You gotta shine it on your story from a sense of or from a place of compassion because that's where the healing is absolutely you know anyone who's listening now or you listening on the replay type replay by the way but if you if you feel like you have dimmed your own light or let someone else dim your light i challenge you to dig deeper and learn how how to let your light shine again, because I honestly believe, this is my feeling, that God does not put us on this earth to just live a small life, that we put ourselves in these boxes. I just don't believe that. You know, just, I just, I don't believe that. There's so much more to life. And then when you take off some of the mask and you think about it, you wear a mask for eight hours a day, especially in this day of COVID, this year of COVID. You wear a mask too long, you become suffocated. You just take off some layers so we can just breathe and just be our full present self and just accept all the goodness that God has given to us. Or whatever your higher being is, whatever your source energy is, your source divine energy. I'm just speaking to mine right now, but feel free to put in your own, fill in your own blank. But we're here to do better. But I do. I, I agree with that. Yeah. It's like we, we know a little better now, or we know a lot. We can't stop. Once again, like I mentioned earlier on my live, that's going back. It's about going forward, momentum, go, push. Move yourself, move your mind, expand it, inspire, be the and best. And I challenge, you. yes, and thank you for that, those wonderful words of wisdom. I'm sorry if I cut you off a little bit, no, I'm sorry. No, no. Um, I just want to say, because many of us, we do um, believe in a higher power. We do mm -hmm. believe in God. We do believe in a source of spirit. So I just want to say that if you believe in God, a God of love, mm. then you also cannot believe that you are unworthy or broken. Mm. Those two things cannot go together or coexist. Mm. So while you may feel yeah. unworthiness or brokenness, I want you to understand the reality of your inherent value mm -hmm. because that is your truth. Yes, ma'am. Mm. I feel that. Woo. That's some good stuff. That's Maybe. better than Toxic D, baby. That's the truth right there. <laughs> that is she like. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Girl, I had to, I had to self-edit in that moment. I was like, don't you say it. <laughs> Look, tell me offline. <laughs> I see you. I get it. <laughs> but you do have to admit. It's good. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes. Oh. Listen. Ooh. Hey, I have been addicted before. Yeah. And I had to choose my addiction or choose me. I had to I had to make a choice, honey. And some day, depending on where you are, it could be a difficult yeah. choice. There's no judgment. But the yeah. choice got to be made. And I had to choose my sanity and my self-respect. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. we can replace the dick, but we can't replace me. I'm irreplaceable. Right. <laughs> to the left, to the left. You had to go, baby. You had to go. <laughs> 
and I had to invite God in. <laughs> God. But boy, on this podcast, we're going to talk about some toxic B, spiritual sources, some plan B, putting the tip in, loving God, doing, <laughs> finding your inner authentic. You know what? That's all about. This is, listen, th- 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 we done talked about the complexity and the beauty of black women, baby. Listen, we got it all and do it all and keep it real, honey, and are made of pure love. Yes. Girl, shoot, what you talking about? Talk about black girls getting their shift together for real. We shifted. We shifted. Hey. (laughs) (laughs) You got to tell me if you're going to do the double. So I'm not fooling with you anymore. We're getting off. Everyone who has uh, commented and liked, and I see some uh, smiley faces and of hearts and thumbs up. I see it all. I'll go back and look. But thank you all for just coming in and sharing this moment. I hope you learned something because I learned a lot today. And I will be processing with Processing Patty. She's right over there. And we're going to be processing. You already know me. We'll be processing this the entire weekend. But I just want to let you all know, um, tune in next Thursday. Uh, No, excuse me. Tune in Monday at 2 p.m. We're talking about decluttering. So, yes, decluttering your mind, declutter your home. It all, there's a psychology behind it. And then next Thursday, we have the lovely, we have the lovely Viola Borden. She's a counselor and she's going to get you prepped up for Valentine's Day weekend and this whole month of love. But just know if you love yourself, you're just not going to contain it to February, right? All year long, all day long. It's right here. It's a lifestyle, baby. It's a lifestyle, <laughs> lifestyle. Okay, uh, before we get off, I'm going to read a couple of comments. Yeah. <laughs> Tell the truth. <laughs> so, Rochelle, she said, another awesome podcast. Thank you, sis. And Thank he, you. He, great topic as usual, ladies. Uh, Viola, we will see you next week. And R.D. Willis loved it in capital letters. Thanks, Superwoman Katrina. Oh, so R.D., if you are a friend of Katrina, oh, I believe she's the one that sent you the invite. Mm -hmm. So, R.D., make sure before you get off, you click any of the links that you see in this description, I'm telling everybody, click on the links that I put and we're going to have a good Friday. This is my happy hour for the weekend. <laughs> just I some know water. that's right. Just some water. <laughs> Detoxing. So any parting words before we hang up? I want to thank you for having me on your amazing platform. And I love the work that you're doing. And I want to just affirm my own amazingness and (laughs) my own awesomeness and the magnificence of each and every one of you. I thank you for joining me, for laughing with us, for embracing us as we just sit here and communicate from our real self, just giving you all that we are unfiltered and still divine. So mm-hmm. please take care of yourself, love on you, and recognize that whatever you've done, whoever you've been with, mm-hmm. how many there's been, you're still innocent. And you are still so very worthy. Yeah. And make sure you join Love You. Mwah. Mwah. Thank you, sis. I want to give one last shout out before we get off. I'm going to give a shout out to my 82-year-old aunt who's probably listening. <laughs> That's all I'll say. <laughs> Hi, auntie. We love you. We're Spanish. We call it, she's Tia. Hey, Tia. I learn something new every day. <laughs> Tia, it is with respect that we um, ask for your forgiveness. And we hope that you have enjoyed this amazing show. <laughs> <laughs> 
love because you. it's danger. <laughs> I saw your post. <laughs> danger, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The toxic D is danger. On that note, I will talk to you all later. Have a good weekend. Love you, Sarita. Love